good morning friends this idea of global citizen forum got founded in singapore i have been traveling around the world in the last 30 years but for the last 5 years i have based myself in singapore uh, as you know singapore has been seen as a smart country a country which has defeated many predictions and has come to establish itself as a city which is now admired by many people around the globe this is a new phenomenon but singapore is not only known for its economic development it is also a think tank it is where a lot of experiments have been done in creating a small one world within the singapore uh, area lee kuan yew the founder of singapore started a university called lee kuan yew university and the dean of this university kishore mohabbani has written a book called convergence in 2014 beyond and in that book he has said that in the past every nation was like a ship on the sea and uh, every ship had his own captain and they were driving in the way they wanted to go today with the advent of technology with the advent of the new internet era and for your information uh, last uh, yesterday we were discussing this and somebody said that never before it has happened that in one year a product has been sold at the extent of 2 billion but last year 2 billion mobile devices were sold in the world this shows the change of internet which is happening in the world and this new internet world today we don't have many ships in the uh, sea there is one ship one big ship and every nation has his own room in the ship the rooms can be big or small but is the ship which is driving the vision of every nation they cannot and they have not been able to drive their own vision now the point is who is driving this ship is this ship driven by any leader who is the world leader now if you ask people they will certainly tell you who is the leader of a nation we can say president or prime minister is leading one nation but who is leading the world now we know that after second world war when the humanity was certainly shaken by violence a united nation was created and the winners of the second world war the five nations created a leadership group what they call g5 or permanent members on security council the us uk france russia and china now we see out of this five three are not seen leaders anymore so g5 actually has moved to g2 and in this world we know the contribution which us has done they became the self proclaimed leaders and they started engaging with the nations of the world in all areas and made great contribution as dr walsh was saying especially in the field of education in the field of human rights in the field of equality but they also had lot of failures from 1945 onwards the amounts of wars which has taken place in the name of peace more than 40 million people 
have died in various wars. Our United Nations, which was formed for peace and non-violence, today has become a non-performing institution. We tried in the year 2000, when I met Ted Turner, the founder of CNN, he was the first guy to build a global television system. When he built the system, he realized that how much violence and deaths are occurring around the world. He brought that to our homes all over the world. And he got disillusioned. And Ted told me at that time that, Dr. Bodhi, can we do something? These political leaders have failed us. Who could help us? So we thought, let's go to spiritual leaders. And that's how this Millennium Summit of Spiritual Leaders was organized. When we had this conference, the major issue came of conversion from one religion to another. After great deliberation, an agreement was signed. We did a lot of hard work for four days, and virtually every religious leader agreed to sign it. And it was printed in New York Times. But four days after that, the Pope said, I don't agree with it. Evangelization is our primary objective. How can we agree to an agreement which does not allow conversion? China said that we cannot recognize especially Dalai Lama, who has been seen as ambassador of peace and uh, ambassador of religious leaders, the leader. And in fact, they said, for us, Dalai Lama falls in a category of terrorist. He is, he is a political person. So the whole agreement failed. Now we are reaching 2014. And let me, at this point, wish you all a very happy 2014. This is a new era. 2014 will be remembered in history as a start of a technology area, era. For years, thousands of years, we have been, the whole societies are based on what we call faith-based society, especially countries like India, Middle East, U.S. Even in U.S., they put in the, in the uh, dollar note, in God we trust. So we have been a faith-based society for thousands of years. I think with the advent of technology, with the advent of now exploring the space, both outside and inner space of human beings, technology have proven that we can unite on the basis of humanity and we don't need God for that. The technology can unite us. The interconnection can unite us. And that's why we are moving into a knowledge society. In this knowledge society, the rules will be different. It is already seen in business. I come from business family. The rule in business has totally changed. We started our group as manufacturing and then moved into various areas. And this year, we changed our name to Smart Group. Why Smart? Because that's what the new technology is happening. Mobile, smart devices, smart things are changing life. Not only changing life, connecting people. Today, with the help of Facebook, the youth today is connected worldwide. They don't need any governments or religion to tell them what is what. Everything is on Google, Facebook, on internet. So in this new knowledge world, where the leaders cannot misguide the masses, 
because on the professionals, doctors even, yesterday we had a conference of smart living. The doctors are today saying that before we talk something, we look ourselves on internet, what we are talking, because the customers knows it. So in this new internet world, where is the position of nation? The internet, the whole idea of internet is to use cloud, iCloud, space. Nothing is happening on surface. The national boundaries has no meaning. A lot of countries like China try to stop internet to come to their countries, totally failed, because they cannot. The government cannot control the boundaries, their boundaries to control internet. But forget internet. Look at the humanity side. What is India? Is India is the people who are living within the boundaries of Indian nation? Today we have Indians all over the world. There is a small India in every city of the world. India today had a problem recently of foreign exchange. They came with a bond which was only could be subscribed by people who are global Indians, not for everybody. Within a period of three months, $40 billion was raised and people from global Indians invested in India. Now why this $40 billion within three months was invested by global Indians in India? Because they think they are Indians. I am a Singapore citizen, but does not make me to say I am not Indian. But then there is a confusion, as am I a Singapore citizen or I am an Indian citizen. So when I say this, uh, we had this conference in Singapore, so somebody asked a question, Dr. Modi, where is your loyalties? Singapore or India? I said, look, I'm a global citizen. From an Indian citizen, first I become a global citizen, then I can become any citizen, doesn't matter. You can, and that's the power of India. The same is the power of China. China, in the last 20 years, has become the manufacturing base of the world, not China. China, this change in China, who brought this change? It is global Chinese. The Chinese government in 1981 changed their philosophy and they came with a new idea of one China. They said the Chinese, wherever they may be, irrespective of the Chinese boundaries, they are part of China. And they asked these Chinese to come and help China to be able to compete in the world, and they did. And what we see is a miracle of China, which is happening in the world, that everything has become affordable. The middle class today is not deprived of technology. They are not deprived of things because made in China products are able to go to masses, a large number of people get benefit of it. So China has played this role in becoming the manufacturing base. They have done that under the communism without recognizing religion. I think we are sitting today in India. I have come here to appeal to Indian people, especially global Indians who are living in India. There are a lot of global politicians we have in India. In politics, they say, you start at a local level, you go to the state level, and then you go to the national level. And then what? In business, you go global. In professional, you go global. Even in religion, you go global because you have people who follow your faith. In politics, they get stuck. It is my appeal to the Indian politician 
to come out and become in the global politics. Because India has a lot to offer. While China and US has offered many things, US from the technology angle, from other leadership angle, India has, can offer a world of non-violence, a violence-free world. India has that philosophy to create a peace. India, <laughs> India is one country which is not stuck up for democracy. Yes, we have democracy. We have much more vibrant de uh, democracy in India with the press we have than any country in the world. The foundation of democracy is two, the free press and the free uh, judiciary. And both of them in India are exemplary. India is also has the many religions. And they have that history of working beyond religion and even India have